What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Brian and Lauren Live. Happy Valentine's Day, babe. Happy Valentine's Day, Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Yes. Appreciate you for watching, checking out the live. I'm going to do a little Valentine's Day special. Mine. Yeah. S some relationship astrology. Why not? Yes, yes. We got uh -huh. Lauren's favorite couple, maybe ever, maybe not. Johnny, Johnny Cash June and, and June Johnny. Carter. Yes. Yeah. And then obviously we're going to do a like a new age one and old school one. So June and Johnny. And then who do you guys think the, the first one? It is going to be the first one that is in the media. Yeah, Lana. I see <laughs> you, Lana, in that chat. Time to heal. I can't call you by your... By your, I just got to call you time to heal. Um, of course, you know, I've already gone down a rabbit hole with this time to heal. Oh yeah. I've already looked at Sophie's chart, but that is not confirmed. So we're not going into that because, you know, I'm not trying to manifest something that isn't necessarily there. However, that his rocker, so we're doing Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. And I have researched these two before, obviously, because they do have a strong connection. Um, it's definitely karmic, but it is love, you know. Um, it's definitely, you know, like a Pluto, almost like Pluto Lilla type situation. But his rocker or the drummer, whatever she is, she's like a guitarist or something in Machine Gun Kelly is the one that this is like alleged that he you know, has strayed with. Um, she is a Virgo sun and a Taurus moon, and he is a Taurus sun. So they have sun moon. So they definitely You're good. have a vibe. Um, and, you know, this is a public relationship that plays out, obviously very public. It's kind of almost like Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton. Remember that? <laughs> you know, that was... You know, it's very, oh, and also off topic, which everybody should watch if they're, you know, into love like me, um, Pamela Anderson, the Netflix documentary, it's amazing. And she talks about, yeah, like Tommy Lee's the love of her life. And that's why she keeps marrying all these people, chasing a high that she's never going to get from that ever again. So that's totally off topic. But I, there was one other thing I wanted to say. What up to Cody in the chat? Hello, everybody in the chat. And uh, I don't know really much about any of these people, no. but I'm down to look at the charts. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and my Valentine ears are not, for the love of God, <laughs> you know, people will probably start saying that I'm on the Grammy narrative or something of, uh, I, I don't understand that whole thing. But yeah, they're my little... They're not demonic, guys, just so you know. Um, but I really wish you would stop doing whatever this is that oh, you're doing. Oh, YouTube was your... flashing um, Hello. something to me. Yeah, the but Pamela Anderson thing is so good. Time to heal. Um, it's all good, so I don't know. Whatever. Um, and then, yeah, so we're going to go into those two and just show, you know, whether you're wanting to know what to look for, obviously, too, in if you're comparing synastry with somebody or just strong aspects in a chart. But, you know, I really feel like everybody should know that because what do, what do, it doesn't matter what label we throw on a relationship. Like, you know, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, you know, they use the whole um, twin flame narrative. Now, you know, they're definitely our soulmates for sure. And it's a, no, you know, it's meant to be a healing, you know, she can't pull him out of the darkness and, you know, she's a Taurus that probably doesn't, and she's got a Leo moon. So, I mean, she's actually, he's a Taurus too. yeah, he's also a Taurus. Um, but she would be the one where, cause he has a lot of Pisces in his chart. And this is the other thing. He right now is probably escaping whatever's like going on in his 
3D reality because he has got Neptune not only conjunct his Venus, but his moon. Like that is when Neptune was conjunct my Venus. I mean, that was <laughs> you wouldn't even need to be on drugs because it's such a it's a life changing transit. And it is like, I, I don't even know. It's it's ecstasy. Yeah, well... And he has it with his moon. His moon and Venus are conjunct in and Pisces. her moon's <laughs> getting squared by Uranus. Right, so and her... There's all sorts of juicy stuff in there. He's astrology. a very heavy Pisces. He's a very... Tw- he is a sun 12th houser. <laughs> so, you know... He is? You told me that his son was in the 12th house. MGK? That, okay, we didn't look at it on whatever chart you do, but when you looked at it when we were at the hotel, oh, you yeah. said that he was a sun in the 12th. That's what you told me. Or oh, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. or he maybe is. it was No, he is. Yeah. It was um it was June Carter, we don't have a time for. Yes, we I don't was have... just throwing these on and I was like, oh, I realized one doesn't have a time and I got confused, so my bad. Um Yeah, we don't have a time for June Carter, but we do for jo- I mean it doesn't matter. There you can and we couldn't find Atlantis on this program, but June and Johnny do have like Atlantis connections too. But yeah. Without further ado. Do you want to talk about our experience? Oh, our experience. Well, I talked about it a lot last night with David on the spiritual tar- deep spiritual tarot. But yeah, last weekend we went to like haunted place. <laughs> it was the haunted museum in Las Vegas, the Zach Baggins museum it was yes. crazy it was fucking wild to be honest with you um i haven't experienced anything like i've definitely never been in a place that felt like that before i can honestly say that was the most haunted place i've ever been to oh absolutely <laughs> by far so, and it was interesting yeah and just because too you had went to the conscious life expo mm-hmm. and so it's like you know Light and dark, which both exist. I mean, I'll be honest. Conscious Life Expo ain't, ain't just... No, I know. Ain't I just know. the high vibe. Like, it, there's a little bit of everything there. It's very 12th house Conscious Life Expo. You get the whole kit and caboodle yeah. of uh, the spiritual community. So, it, yeah, there's there's things going on there. That, that I <laughs> definitely felt... And, like, this is the other thing. Because Brian has... Pluto in the eighth. So, I mean, like, Brian is powerful in the stuff that is otherworldly that he can sense. And I know that they always say Uranus energy, too. I mean, my Mercury and Aquarius definitely, you know, channels things. But I don't, uh, we were talking about this before we, you know, got, I don't know, we're always talking about things. But before we got into this episode, it's like, I have, you know, there's the four Claire's and mine are more like feeling like I can feel the energy because of being an empath and all that. I don't have visions. I don't, you know, that Claire cognition. It's just a feeling and like an inner knowing it's like you get this download and you get Mm -hmm. this feeling and you know it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the hardest ones to attune yourself to because you're almost like, because you can't see it. it. Is this, is this, legit it's very 12th house real yeah it's like unseen so you just have to trust your intuition and you know if it doesn't feel great then yeah i mean but that's over the years of just having like discernment you know Mm -hmm. um i don't know and that could all come online for me at uh, pluto's going into my 12th Mm -hmm. house so uh, if that (laughs) For a long time. So, I mean, that could be something with Pluto in the 12th that comes online where maybe I do start to maybe have, like, more intense dreams and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that could bring on a clairvoyance of sorts. Yeah. I'm more, like, claircognizant and clairstent. Because, what is it? Claircognizance, clairstents, clairvoyance. Clairaudience. And then clair- yeah. And I do, I do have that, like, to, like, a degree. Like, I'll hear you know, faint things, but I am going to say that I, I mean, during the different rooms, you could feel the energy shift, but like when we're talking about Peggy the doll and like the Dybbuk box and stuff, I, 
Uh, <laughs> it's like, I don't want to sit here and say I felt at home, but I, my Taurus moon loves to be in yeah. old Victorian homes. Like I love antiques. I love thrifting. I love anything that has a story that, yeah. So I felt like calm i felt very calm in there remember that like clown was behind us and you're like you didn't even oh that was so funny well one lauren (laughs) was cracking me up because she was the last one out of every room on this tour Mm -hmm. and like the the guide's like are you gonna like take something what are you doing in there still (laughs) you know like come on i was just like Um, oh and i really (laughs) just wanted to like feel yeah, the energy. Yeah, and I, then the clown was hilarious. They have a really, I mean, that was probably the lamest part creepy. of that whole thing is like he does have a lot of creepy clown stuff and you kind of walk through this one section of it. And um, there was a clown that started walking behind me, like one of their workers in a clown costume. And I like f- felt it and looked back and was like, you know, I've been in haunted houses before. I'm just like, yeah, you're clearly human. So I was like, okay. And then right after that, we're like standing at this turn and Lauren's just kind of like sitting there, kind of taking it in. And right behind her, this door comes down and this like another employee, actually this was like a doll, like Mm -hmm. a motorized doll. It comes out of the wall and like is right behind her like, and I'm just like, I watched that happen and she just had no idea. And I'm like, look what just happened. Yeah. I was just (laughs) like, I want to like get to the rooms and I don't know. I felt very, I did. I felt really, I did feel a lot of energy in certain rooms and I mean, I didn't see anything, but it's like that again, like Brian has more of the ability where he could like see that kind of stuff. Um, and I, it's more like feeling for me. Um, and I just want to comment really fast. Uh, Cody says Pluto's going into his eighth. Um, oh, yeah, that's going to sure. be an activation AF. Gosh, I almost wish I had that. Um, <laughs> I that's, was born with it. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be an activation for sure. And that's like a 20-year transit. So it's like it's it's Pluto. So it's going to move slow. And it's going to bring you very eighth house things. That's for sure. It comes, yeah. It doesn't come for free. Um, but I definitely... And we'll, we'll talk about her chart maybe next, because we're doing very light today, obviously, Soulmates, V-Day, Love. And then next episode, um, I definitely want to go into that Lee. Oh. Her name's Lee Sober Shapiro. And wow, it is. And if you, if anybody wants to watch any of this stuff, like, it's, I mean, it's Ghost Adventure, so it's all over, but I have the Discovery Plus app. And he has all of his specials and everything on there. And this is called The Haunted Museum, where he has eight episodes and they're of the like very haunted rooms in his museum. And they're wild because Eli Roth paired up with Zach to produce this like about these objects that are in his um, museum. So Eli Roth like did such an amazing what is that like a reenaction reiterating what these like the Dybbuk box <laughs> and I felt like very um yeah in these rooms that are so hot I don't know I mean some people are I just I really am drawn in a comfortable way to I don't I'm not into demonic things or anything like that I'm never I'm always like white light of protection I'm never calling that stuff in ever but I always want to balance out the light and the dark and know both sides and be very like I told him do not wear it let's not wear any crystals whereas you would think everybody be like no I have to wear crystals to protect me and all that it's like No, I just don't want that, like, because that all holds energy. Um, But also not going in there with any fear. I think a lot of these entities that are attached to these dolls or these objects, they can sense when somebody's vulnerable and has fear. And it was like, I went in there completely, like, having respect Mm -hmm. for this building, for everything that's in it. And, yeah, like, when Peggy said bye to you and all that, you know? I mean, you're... She said, thank you. Or thank you. Yeah. I said goodbye. And she was like, thank you. Yeah. You need to have, because the. You're welcome. (laughs) The not living is a very real thing as just as much as the living. 
And so you have to have respect for that. I mean, when we were in like Richard Ramirez, it was like the serial killer room. And of course I was like, oh my gosh, this is so, it was Richard Ramirez, which we should do. He's a Pisces. So we should do his chart one time. Um, Charles Manson, Ted Bundy. It was all like the pro prolific serial killers. And I did feel very heavy energy in that room, obviously. But um, it's all about how you perceive it. If you, I, I've seen a lot of people like, on these shows that if they don't, if they're just like, this is a bunch of bullshit and like, you know, whatever, like that really is the energy not to go in there with, you know, obviously having an open mind and what you experience and what you feel. Oh yeah. I love I Jerome. Totally agree. Jerome is definitely a vibe. They did an episode in Jerome, but, um, yeah, you, you, so if you want to watch any of that stuff, it's called the haunted museum. If you're into that spooky uh, stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's very, it's just very interesting. It's, it's wild. It's just a fascinating side of it all. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. It's a side that like does, like Thank you said, you. respect. Like, I feel like it does. It needs to be respected for what it is. I just got it today. Thank you, Stephanie. My shirt. Is that today? Such yes. a pretty Pisces. Oh, thanks, babe. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, to you so, too. Okay, so now into the right. love. Love. Okay, so love, love. you go first and tell me what you see because I already, you know. Well, this is just Megan Fox's chart just in general. So it's like... Whenever I do a chart, any kind of like relationship chart, it's always going to start with one, um, you know, first each chart individually. So like, yeah, moon, <laughs> 15 degrees of Leo, like. Oh, that full moon like lit that, up. Like she probably wasn't expecting that, right? Like Uranus brings like quick, sudden changes and her moon's in the seventh house that does deal with relationships. It's actually the ruler of her seventh house of relationships with cancer. So, like, this Uranus, you know, was not messing around, transiting in Taurus at 15 degrees, square it. That's, like, a like a perfect example of, like, wait, what? And then it was so public, too, which I think is interesting, because Venus, you know, maybe not Venus necessarily, but there's just something about this 10th house that got activated with this whole thing, too, which for some reason doesn't want to circle. Which, I mean, it's ruled by Pluto, and she has Pluto up there by the midheaven. It does have the south node on it. So that was the interesting thing, too. Is like, wow. It became this, like, public thing. She deleted. That's very south node. Oh, and then started following On the 10th house ruler. Rival. Like, just deleted her Instagram. Like, I don't want to be seen anymore. Like, Well, they were just seen two days ago coming out of relationship counseling. Oh, like, so, literally after this. The, this is why it's like, is it really over? You know? Well, the crazy thing for Megan Fox is her note is literally 29 Libra. So guess yeah. what's over there in Capricorn at 29? Pluto squaring her nodes right now literally and also going to come back and square those with her nodal return at the very same time and you know for a north node aries person like sure north node aries individuals can have relationships but they're 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 gonna like she needs to not be so codependent she's probably more codependent than we realize even though she probably oh. tries to come off as that, you know, she's not. She got a moon in the seventh. She she feels very comfortable in relationships. And that Leo moon. And she's a moon algal, which is interesting. Yeah. Her birthday is May 16th. Yeah. That's Lee yeah. Sober yeah. Shapiro's birthday. Yeah, I know. Birthday. I was going to say that yesterday they're when both, we were watching that. They're both yeah. sun algal. Sun algal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. She wants what she wants. I mean. And she will definitely, of course, she absolutely is dominant, is uh, dominating that relation is she feels like she's losing control of that relationship uh, that is and he's probably like i love you and i want to be with you and like what more do you want me to prove you know what i mean like like that's probably really like god it's probably exhausting i mean do, do you think he cheated on her I, the the only reason that I would say that because everybody's gonna jump to that conclusion, right? Nobody knows. Because I mean, knows. if we look at if we look at his chart, which I really haven't spent. I mean, any I would only say that if he did, it would have been in a moment of like, right, like a fucking Neptune on his V 
Venus and Moon. And he definitely is public about doing... He smokes a lot of, you know... Oh, yeah. We, I, mean, I mean, there's nothing Neptune's wrong with... all over his midheaven. Or yeah. not, it's finishing in his midheaven, in his 10th house. And Sorry. there's nothing wrong with, you know, smoking marijuana, but if you're just doing it to escape and not to, like, really, like, I don't know, have it enlighten you and, like, what does everybody call it? Microdosing? Most people aren't doing that. They're just, like, doing whatever to escape. I mean, he has so much Pisces. Yeah, he does. You know what I mean? So it's like, and that his son's in the 12th house. So yeah, it's very like when we get to June and Johnny, I mean, it is kind of like a, a new age. They really actually, this is like a mirror. They very much are like the new age June and Johnny because uh, it took John, June and Johnny 12 years to actually finally come together because Johnny was such a fucking 12th houser. Like, and she was just like, I can't anymore with this, you know? When people are in that 12th house, I mean, you cannot save anybody from that. You know, they have to do the work on their own. But when it's such an intense connection, you're like, how the fuck can we not be together and keep merging? Right. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of love in the 12th house. There's a lot of... Like somebody said in the chat, he was on a lot more than we. Like, oh, yeah, I'm this sure. guy fucking yes, for of sure. Cor- of course. <laughs> like, this is of one of those twelfth housers where you you know he's it's probably it's he's a, on all the drugs. It's he's, probably a Heath Ledger <laughs> cocktail. Let's right. be honest. It's like he's you know I mean I'm sure you know, God Heath Ledger was so R I P potentially, Heath. Um, yeah. But yeah, that Neptune finishing in his tenth is very interesting. Um, Venus Moon, his Uranus too. It's at nine degrees of Capricorn, and Jupiter's in Aries at eight degrees, coming to nine degrees. Just came out of shadow. I mean that's a pretty tight. Jupiter squared to his Uranus, which again, that's kind of like expanding some kind of like crazy. Un- so they're both having this Uranus thing going on here. Like, oh, you know, it was Uranus square time. her moon, but his Uranus, like he probably wanted to break away. He's also got Uranus in the eighth house, which does deal with, you know, very emotionally committed partnerships, right? Like these are like deep mergers, like oh, twin flame shit, emotional. like they were saying. Um, and then that's also his midheaven ruler. So it, again, triggered public reaction for both of them. And his vertex is right on her Pluto. So another like very, um, I mm. mean, they were definitely fated to come together. Like there's no fucking doubt about that, and but it's, he just had a Mars retrograde fully in his first house that's finishing up. So it's kind of interesting. You're probably going to see him completely different than you've ever seen him before. And you said his 10th house is being activated. Like he's going to probably come out with a new album or something. Yeah, and I bet it's a. I bet it's different than what you think. Yeah. Um, he again. This is where with Neptune finishing in his tenth and a Mars retrograde in the first. Like what you thought you knew about this guy, you didn't. Especially with all that Pisces and with all the water in his chart. Like this guy's got a lot going on inside. Oh. A he's, lot going on inside, and I think he's been emotional. playing a character. Yeah. And it's probably likely you see that character change to whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Also. You know, he's got this Eros, right? Mm-hmm. 29 Pisces. Oh, man. Kind of yeah, crazy. Oh, my God. That's Jupiter sex-tiled. was lighting that, that up That was lighting it year. up, and that's where the, they were like, twin flame, <laughs> right? But now Pluto's sextiling it, which is like, well, is that true? Is that really spiritually true? Well, they have Neptune in their composite in the 12. <laughs> so yeah, it's we'll like... pull that up in a second. Yeah. Also, it's so, part of fortunes at zero degrees of Taurus, so Pluto's, um, you know, and it's at zero... Zero one, so literally right there at the beginning, right when you come into Taurus is part of fortune. That's going to get squared by Pluto too, which I mean doesn't necessarily mean misfortune, but you know, fortune's changing, the wheels mm-hmm. turning, if if you will. Um, this is a huge test to their test for, relation, yeah, but I mean, also to their individually. Because the North Node is going to be on his son. Like, that's positive. But it's like, right, if you're, is he really going to, you know, because he's, what, a two-degree son? Yeah, uh, two-degree Taurus. So, so yeah, he's in Pluto Square, you know, his son also. And Pluto was conjunct his Saturn for, God. Yeah, I mean, oh, he's got cr- he's a got a ton transit. of things going on. Yeah, like this guy internally has to, and then having such a public relationship, she's definitely not going to be easy to deal with. No, like. He's been dealing with also Pluto on his Saturn. Yeah. 
Which that's Which a once in a lifetime. It's crazy. Saturn to, to Pluto have that. brought on the spell for God's sakes. But it very much does rule as eighth, mm-hmm. even in like an equal sign chart, or you know maybe if there isn't an intercept in Placidus, like that's his eighth house ruler. So this guy is going through a huge transformation. It's already happened. Um, he's just going to be a different a different soul. And I would say with with Neptune finishing like because it's about to. It's going to come back to 25 again. So he's not completely done with um, Neptune on his moon. But that is going... That's like a consciousness shift. Oh. That is some like... I mean, one, it's extremely sensitive. Yes. It's extremely emotional. But when it comes to any... Especially music. I mean, to be an artist and have a moon in Pisces and then have Neptune transit it. I mean... And moon ruling his second house. I mean, if anything, like, it would be such a creative, like, time for him. But not if he's not in the we'll right We'll see, energy. because that's where he can self-undo himself completely yeah. into the ground. And he can lose all his money, all Absolutely. his riches, and suck it up. Or somehow he spiritually transforms, changes sort of whatever it is he's doing, and he, you know, connects with people on a completely different level. Because his moon is in the, le- the 11th. So it's like, how does he relate to more people maybe it is something to do with this breakup and maybe if he can do that and come with a more like higher consciousness maybe he manifests huge abundance i mean dude has jupiter exalted in his second house like oh yeah the dude you know Let's get probably not an issue making though. money i want to look at because like her jupiter is exactly conjunct his venus so everything in their chart it's like expansive mm-hmm. no you don't want to share anything <laughs> no 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 i want you to circle and all that but i just i mean jupiter venus that that's a twin flames we're you know they've yeah, exact seventeen seventeen. You know what I mean? Like that is a dream. Yeah. And then look at this twelfth house with your Ur- is that Uranus? No, it's uh, Uranus Neptune. Uranus Neptune in the twelfth. In, in Megan Fox's twelfth. Yeah, <laughs> like we're twin flames. Yeah, but then you know Uranus I mean? is there, like you thought, <laughs> right? Fox, you thought like Uranus is gonna come and yeah, Uranus. Brings really interesting shakeups in the twelfth house. Um, very like. And they have vertex moon, or she has vertex moon. She has vertex moon, but he has a south node on her moon. South node moon. So you that know, is. He kind of owes her a debt. It's one of those karmic um, relationships that was definitely meant to to happen. Um, he probably owes her. You know, who knows? Maybe this just gives her a better limelight. Maybe this makes her look, you know, come out, you know, really looking queen, you know, really. And, you know, where he can't be king anymore because he has the south node in Leo. So, you know, he has to come out and just kind of be, look, I'm just like everybody else. I made a mistake. Like he kind of has to like take the fall for it. And she might look like the better person maybe on the end when all said and done with whatever ends up being their relationship. And they have Isis and Osiris conjunct. Like that's another one. So it is a healing relationship. Like on a, it it is a spiritual relationship. Like there's no fucking doubt about that. Like they're very heavily into the occult and, and you know, I mean, it's not that it's not real, but it's, listen, it's playing out in this crazy public way. Um, there's so much outside influence, clearly, that, you know, unless they can both really, you know, ground them, it's almost like they need to be apart from each other to really see if that's what, if they're meant to be together, like, honestly. Yeah. I mean, another thing is MGK, Chiron 11 degrees, Cancer. So he's in his Chiron, Chiron square. Which Heavy. I think is interesting, um, just because he's he is going through like a major healing um, moment in his life. Yeah, and apparently this is part of that. Oh, absolutely. But anyways, back to the sinistry. Um, gosh, what else interesting do they have? Oh, they have vertex. Mm-hmm. MGK's vertex is conjunct Megan Fox's south node. And Pluto's right there too. And Pluto's right there too, but I mean. Yeah, close that's, enough. It's close. So again, more like faded kind of whatever you know. This matrix designed these two to be here together. Maybe they're twin flames. Maybe not. I don't know. 
I, it would I don't, have I don't to be, even know. it would have to, <laughs> I mean, they're definitely, so, and like, that's the whole thing about this, like, you know, there's twin rays, you know, twin flame. It's just like, it's all that whole verbiage is, is it's the highest exaltation of a soulmate because you are ascending. Like my whole, um, energy towards that is that like, you, if you even have that, like, I mean, again, they have Isis and Osiris conjunct in their chart. Like, her Isis is making, her Isis is making aspects to his Osiris. And it's in Aquarius. So it's also like, it's Aquarian. It's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be liberating. It's supposed to be, you know, healing, but also of the like collective and bringing people together. And, but if, one person is in the 12th house. You cannot pull like that whole narrative is about ascending about both people being on their own path, coming together to, you know, really heal past timelines in this timeline. Mm. And if they can't, you know, and, and really it's when in, in a connection is so intense like this, like when we get to June and Johnny, it's that's why I said it's almost like it's like this is a mirror of like they're like this new age, you know, kind of, you know, June and Johnny if they can. But I feel like, yeah, they'll separate to come back together if they're really, you know, meant to be together and like whatever mission, you know, that they're doing because they are very creative together, you know, so North Node conjunct part of fortune and sun. Yeah. So they have like a lot of node action with the moon yeah. and the sun for each of each other. And even, you know, some Pluto a little bit, but vertex also just more like, you know, these are kind of written in the stars connections with people. They're just, they're soulmates. I wouldn't even, that's why I don't even like using this whole twin narrative because all a twin is, is His the North highest is exalted of Isis. a soulmate. He's, it's Isis at 11 Aquarius, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's conjunct his north node. Right, yeah. Pandora's box. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she is. She was his Pandora bo- Pandora's box. I mean, he was popular before her, but I don't know. Like, I feel like when they started dating, it was like a whole new level of popularity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and they they also met at a time when I bet, like, Jupiter had, ju- or Neptune had just finished, like, transiting her Jupiter, which is, you know, Neptune, Jupiter. And then, um, you know, now that Neptune's on his moon and his Venus, it's like, right, is it a dream or a nightmare? And she is more mature and serious, I, yes, but she also has that Leo moon, Cause does her, her her does her moon square her sun or no they're too far apart. Her moon square his sun. No, her sun like in her natal. Um, her sun's twenty five degrees. Right. Um, they're fit. They're ten degrees apart. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's got some. Yeah, I mean, she does have a first quarter square, but it's and not like. And her sun's like, on Algol. <laughs> it's not the most intense one. Like there is there is pressure there. Yeah. You know, and, and she is, her ascendant is Capricorn with Mars on it. Like she's meant, she's doing what she's meant to be doing. You know, she's here to, I I don't think, I think that she is very evolved spiritually, whatever you want to call it dark or light or whatever, because you got to have both. You got to have the eighth house and the 12th house. There's, you know, you can't anybody in this chat or anybody, if they always think that it just has to be love and light. Well, that is absolutely not true. Yeah. You have to know both polarities. That's actually what, um, that's actually what a twin soul would be. It's like one person is triggering the fuck out of your shadow, hmm. trying to, you know, and then balancing it out. That's like what it is. They mm. trigger each other's shadows, but then they try to come together to like heal that. And you know, there's going to be moments as above, so below that these transits come in to be like, is this relationship on a solid foundation yeah you want to know what's crazy about megan fox too if we go back to her chart is her fifth house Mm -hmm. 
Gemini, where she's got her Venus, Lilith. Um, oh, yeah, think, she's Venus Lilith. I can't remember what that asteroid is, but also Chiron. I think that's... Um, It doesn't matter. I've never seen that. I've never seen that. It's one of the ones you gave me. What what does she have at um, 22? Do you have that on your phone right there? At 22 Libra. Or 22 um, Gemini. I'm curious. Mm -mm, I don't have it in here. Oh. All right. Anyways, never mind. But that's where this Mars retrograde, this whole thing was, was in her fifth house, right? Over her Venus. Started there. She's got Neptune in Pisces squaring her Venus. Mm -hmm. But stationed. But you who know, are we to say that they're on. not good people? You know what I mean? So. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying like. No, I'm not. I'm responding in the chat. Who are we to say that they're not? <laughs> we oh, don't know them. I really don't know them. I, I can't <laughs> we don't. On their we, we can't even say that. I really don't follow pop culture much either. So I'm like just kind of going off the bare minimum yeah. I know and the astrology to be completely honest Their with you. Their relationship is so public. But this Mars retrograde public. was huge. And also Mars on her Chiron during this whole thing too inner fifth house of romance and yeah. love and you know creative self-actualization which i think is the big thing with pluto squaring her north node again like inner nodes th she's realizing she she can't just like rely on a relationship like she has to come into her own creative space again and maybe that's what this is all about maybe that's the healing lesson um somewhere in here because right he's got moon Square yes, Lana, I agree with you. They do love each other very much. So, I think they I probably mean, do. I mean, his moon, 25, they, they do. squares, Venus, So anybody that, you know, that's fine. We can respect all opinions in here. But, you know, it's because of what they wear and all this narrative that people get so caught up on, like, you know, with the Grammys and this and that. Yeah, whatever you feed your mind with is what you're going to, you know, consume. So Composite like, chart. Yeah, let's look at the composite. It's like, are we dark because we went to a haunted museum? <laughs> Some might think so. <laughs> I know. It's like, again, the polarity. Um, well, the composite chart is the midpoints of all their planets put together, for those of you who don't know. So there's still a Taurus sun because 2 degrees Taurus and 25 gets you 13 yeah. of Taurus. So that's kind of just how that gets put together. Same with the Ascendant and every other planet and point. I mean, again, look at all that in Taurus in the second house. Oh, and it's in its Taurus in the second, which is likes that's its home. Yeah, it's very comfortable there. I mean, it's Mars. The house is Mars ruled by Aries, mm -hmm. but still, it's you know, they. I'm sure they lived a very comfortable life during their relationship. Yeah. However, of course, there is something about the second house that's very stubborn, mm -hmm. and they're both Tauruses. And yeah. that's the kind of the issue sometimes so with fixed. dating a sign, your, your same sign, is that you're almost like two, you could be too similar in some ways, mm -hmm. and there's not enough like polarity. Yeah. So if they're both very stubborn and very like, you know, in their own way for certain things, this could be, you know, kind of an issue. Or if they're, you know, they also have Pluto in the eighth in the composite, and that's one of the hardest composite Plutos to have, and it does oppose their Jupiter and their sun. Oh my gosh, this is the, the one in the chat. Okay, we're just going to have to like ignore this. But um, it was the one that was commenting on the YouTube about your experience yesterday with, okay, I'm like, because yeah, using the L word Lucy in Vegas and okay. So we just have to, yeah. <laughs> the picture is blurry, she says. The picture is blurry? Mm-mm. Hmm. Yeah. Looks good on this end. Is the picture blurry? I don't know. I don't know. It says perfect streaming. No drop frames. You got to check your stuff time to heal. Shouldn't be blurry. It potentially could be your internet. Blurry. But, yeah, we're... I don't know. It we're, looks clear. We're, we're, uh, we're putting out... What we're putting out is clean. Clean, clean. <laughs> so I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Restart. Okay. <laughs> it could be blurry if your it's settings little... on YouTube aren't set to like 1080. Like you can go and click the little gear button. Um, a lot of people don't do this on their phone or their devices, but it'll auto set you to like 720. So if you want to watch in 1080 with your phone or your 
whatever you're watching on is totally capable They're of doing. They're saying the chart is a little blurry. <sighs> I mean, maybe over here it does, but. That's not getting full quality because it's just a preview. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just needed a refresher. All right, good. But <laughs> we do want to know that stuff, so yeah. Let yeah, us know. and you know, if you want to change your settings to 1080, it'll come up better. I and mean, I don't even know what that means. I could do a quick <laughs> check. Maybe there's something I can do if I watch. Okay. They're saying it's better. Just a little smaller. Uh, I mean, it's pretty pretty clear yeah i don't know guys maybe, i'm sorry maybe ai <laughs> maybe sorry. ai um uh <laughs> maybe ai um is infiltrating us anyways composite pluto in the eighth is like a serious karmic debt in a lot of ways with someone. It's extremely intense. These relationships usually do not last, but they do transform the couple. Yes. So I understand why they do feel like they have this extreme, maybe twin flame, whatever you want to call it, connection. Yeah. Because that's how that kind of manifests. And they were meant to come back into that extreme energy with Pluto in the eighth. But um, it's it's tension because it's, again, opposing a lot of their planets. It's also square Mars. And they have Mars, you know, in a big T-square here with yeah. Jupiter. So, I right. mean, this was kind of a recipe to eventually blow up in some ways. I mean, they it could be controlled, but this is like deep spiritual work. Yes. And like knowing your individual shadows could save a relationship. But if you're going to point out the other person's shadows and you're going to like dig into them... Or it's not triggering. take responsibility, which I would say that all this second house in Taurus, like they mm -hmm. they have to own up to their own individual stuff, especially Megan Fox. I got to put emphasis on her yeah. because of her nodes mm -hmm. where they're at. Like she really can't put the blame on him and she maybe very well did that. Who knows? Or maybe she is already. Maybe there's more to it that we don't see. Well, I mean, obviously she got, ex yeah, I mean, it could have been handled you know, I mean, they're in the public eye, so, <laughs> you know, I mean, right. Did she, she went through all that, then deleted the whole, because now her whole Instagram's gone. Right. So it's like, she made a point to follow Eminem, you know, which was very petty, and um, three guys. She started following three guys. She was never following anybody before. And so it's like, mm -hmm. what do those three guys that must have been a point of something in their relationship that got brought up or, or who knows? I mean, it, we're just going off of their astrology and their connection. And the thing is that uh, all astrology does is confirm we're not crazy. It shows the energy between, you know, two people. Now, how they, how evolved, like we were talking about last week, how evolved two souls are, that it plays a major role into this, you know, and yeah, you can't, we're here to guide and to, you know, heal multiple timelines, but we're not here to save anybody. You can't, mm -mm. you can't, they, they've got to individually do their work, you know, to then be able, you know, to, yeah. I think it is interesting too, with like, it really was like Neptune around their North node that like, again, more of that this is amazing and in the 12th house right of course of course you know? and it's like so that's just how it goes sometimes with the 12th house too <laughs> and, and eros there is that sometimes the rose colored glasses do wear off when things get too intense maybe not being able to work through things it again it comes kind of comes back to like accountability and responsibility with saturn in the 10th house in capricorn and you know trine venus could it, i mean they could get it's there is potential I think they if they both very... have the spiritual growth individually. Yes. Like, I think they do need they to separate. Could, they to could come back make together. this work. Yes, I agree. They're very much... it. Th they are like a Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee, minus all the, like, fuckery that played out. Like, it, it is a very... It is karmic. It, there is karma, major karma from past lives that needs to be transformed. But... 
yes, they, it's almost like if they do try to be with somebody else, it's, it's not, they're going to always want to be chasing this type of like love and like, this is almost like a high, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, they just need like the extreme passion yeah. all the time. And when that wears off, it's almost right. like they get bored too. Yeah. Right. And not, and that's just not, and that's, you know, very Mars square Pluto. Yeah. Like, man, if this isn't exciting and sexy and funky fresh and like, whoa, you know, mm-hmm. getting all the knobs twisted in the weirdest, most exciting ways every time, like yeah. it wears off. And right. that's even like the squares with Jupiter there too. It's like. Gosh, at some point, all the magic, you know, in that, you know, some days aren't going to be like the other day. Yeah. That can kind of throw one or two of them off. And I actually think that she loves the drama more. I don't really think. He is a very, if you've ever seen him in interviews and stuff, he is a very, you can just tell by his chart, he is a sensitive soul. Like, yes, they bo- it both plays out, but when this whole thing went down, he didn't do anything like, you know... She was the one who, who, you know, yeah. it's a very, it's like a trauma bond. It's also a trauma bond. Esperanza, you got a chance, girl. Yeah, you do. You got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, girl. Yeah. Get it. I mean, there's a couple things. Like, even if they did get back together, though, and like, sure, there's always potential to work these things out, you know, but with Pluto coming into their 11th house, and squaring their Venus, like they're like two and a half, three years away from it not working out. <laughs> and then you said Venus is going to retrograde like through, you know. Oh, Venus is going to retrograde in their fifth. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> you know, just before the sixth house cusp right there and then in the fifth house. So, yeah, I mean, they got massive hurdles. If they were to get back together like this summer into the fall, massive hurdle Venus retrograde in the fifth of their composite. And then Pluto starting to square their Venus into the next upcoming years yeah i mean maybe like again the, the the relationship and the individuals have to evolve and grow and they're both going through that right now in their own right so yeah. again it kind of goes back to the individuals potentially but it's work and it's like do they want to put that work in and i just think that it's a little bit different for both of them yes like oh absolutely i and think with all that megan Uranus fox energy. needs to put more work into her yes yeah. So this is probably actually better for her in the long run. All right, let's get to my favorite couple. All right. Let's get to the OGs. John and Cash. And it burns, burns, burns. <laughs> Look at this 12th house, sir. Man. <laughs> Look that... at this stacked 12th house. He was. He was a crazy He Pisces. was a 12th house, sir. I mean, 12th house, Pisces. Pisces rising, double Pisces, boom. Moon in Scorpio. <laughs> Dude's got a crazy chart. Um, mm-hmm. We'll just look at their synastry because they're both not around anymore and they're not in the yes, tabloids. They're, so they're what's together the point? in the heavens. So what are your favorite aspects with your one of your favorite couples? Oh, gosh. I haven't looked at this in so long. Um, well, they definitely have a north node. Is it his Venus and her north node? She's Taurus. Um... Let's see. Gosh, I have to like get used to this situation. Um, where is his? Um, no, it's like in Taurus. Oh, yeah. Well, she has the North Node at twenty degrees of Taurus. No, they have. Oh, Chiron North Node. Yeah, they have Chiron North Node. But they, her Venus is in Taurus too. Yeah, her Venus and her North Node are in Taurus. Right, and he's the Chiron person, right? Yeah. So Chiron Venus, Chiron North Node, um, that is a healing. It's very heavy. That's very karmic, but it's And they healing. did have, like, they had their own trials and tribulations, right? Well, yeah, it took them 12 years. I mean, obviously, you know, you everybody's seen Walk the Line. God, mm-hmm. I love that movie. Um, yeah, but she also, like is like somebody too that's like i'm not because she had a moon in capricorn like i'm not gonna you know just like let um Mm. you know uh, like 
I'm not going to let you keep... Because, I mean, obviously when they met too, they were both like... I think she was divorced and he was married. But then, you know, he... He was in his relationship for a long time and then she had gotten married like two or three times or something like that. And she was always like, he would always be the one, like he said that when he met her, it was just like, I mean, it's Pisces cancer. It's, it's a vibe. Like they, they activated each other and obviously they were both in a very, like, this is why I say like twins, like they were, they did go on a mission together. Like yeah. singing and like all of that. Um, I mean, like talk about a mission and like true love. And she was there for him. And like he always kept asking her to marry him. And she was like, you know, I, I because that just I posted on my Instagram the ring of fire. Like it's like it burns. <laughs> it <laughs> like, burns. Yeah. Because again, it's so intense and it's so passionate. And you're like, but he was such a 12th houser. She could not pull him out of that. And it took them 12 years to finally like come together. Mm. And when they did, they, you know, don't get me wrong. Did they go through trials and tribulations within their marriage too? Zach actually did a whole thing in Jamaica of their home. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, uh, Is it haunted? That's where I guess, um, Aaron came back with like some attachment with a witch or something. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good episode. But um, it's like, it was, I mean, it wasn't their main house. It was in Jamaica, but they did spend time there. Um, and then when she died, he died four months later because literally they were like. I feel like that's when you know. He would write her these love letters and like, I mean, they were just. Uh, yeah, it was, it's. But they had to, I mean, 12 years that it took them to actually finally come together because she was like, yeah, I'm not, he had to do the work. He had to get sober. He had to, you know, not be in jail. And, you know, he was a 12th houser. So he was definitely fuck, not only fucking around on his wife, with multiple people, but, you know, he was just, he, you know, he was very... Um, very creative, very talented guy, but oh, had a sure. very That's traumatic childhood and, you know, had to heal that shit. And but he she said, was perfect. Like she was his earth. Angel. Even just like that cancer son, like, yeah. and the good aspects it made to her Mars or his Mars, his Eros, uh, Mercury son with mm -hmm. the trine, like they, they, you know, that's very harmonious. Like they, they got each other. And yes. they could, you know, especially for him, because he had so much 12th house, like she almost like was the perfect person to nurture she... that creative person that he was. And also the chaotic kind of energy that he was too. But also stood in her power. Like, I'm not going to let you keep doing this. Like, yeah, probably so... all her Taurus, to be honest, right? Like being yeah. able to like oh, hold, yeah. being able to like be like steady and like and keep right, that like empress. And Capricorn, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and then like that keep moon that Capricorn? empress energy. So again, like even her Venus was making great aspects to Vesta, mm -hmm. um, and just a lot of like natural trines and sextiles between her Moon and Venus to his planets. Yeah, and do they have anything? Especially Where's... Vesta, which Vesta is and like good vertex. luck like, with look, women. We're... Oh, her vertex is in Aries. Does he have anything in Aries? Do they have any vertex connections? Um, he had Venus in Aries and Venus Uranus conjunct, which kind of added to his... Yeah, uh, and her vertex. Like, yeah. Which added to his, like, whoa, you know, polarizing figure. Extremely creative. In the vertex there. Yeah, v yeah, vertex Venus. Like, faded. You Definitely. know? But karmic, <laughs> right? Like, and I think they had Juno. Her Juno... His Juno was in Scorpio, wasn't it? Yeah. His, is, Ju his Juno's in Cancer. Her okay, Juno's her in Scorpio. Juno's in Scorpio. But they were an and exact he was very trine. Scorpionic. Like in what about his ascendant? Was her Juno on his ascendant? Um Or no, no he was a Pisces. His ascendant is twenty two Pisces. Oh, his moon though. Isn't it making a connection to his moon? Well, we don't have a time oh, for his moon? Yeah, where's his Scorpio moon? His Scorpio moon's seven. L they have Juno Moon. Yeah, Juno Moon and Juno Juno exact trine. Yeah. So it's... And even like Jupiter Juno in square. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, those two in square, like, I take it. I feel like, you know, they had to work for it. Who's the Jupiter person? Him? Johnny. Yeah, of course he was, because she's the Juno, the nurturer. Which also squared his, or her Venus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean... Like, they had to work. Like, it wasn't just like, 
la di da right off the no. bat. Twelve years, you said. Like that kind of shows that like Jupiter put the effort in to get his, you know, goddess. And that's why I said in the movie, I know I've done and said a lot of things and I've hurt you so much, but like you are my angel. Like you like were sent to me to like, God, it makes me emotional. I like save him. Like obviously she was his earth angel, like 100%. I mean, they did have Jupiter arrows. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very magnetic and intense connection. And, you know, they also... Yeah, yeah. Never mind. It's not that. It's not that important. But Jupiter trying Uranus. And that's what I mean. It's just like these are two people that you know. I think it's like that these connections are real, but we're so conditioned to be like we want it now. You know, we have to have it now. We want it now. And um, yes, Jupiter cycles are twelve years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know, it's kind of like. Yeah, they they lo they longed for each other. Mm -hmm. No matter who they were with or anything like that, they longed for each other. Like they probably had a very like telepathic, like just yeah. It was yeah. I mean, if, well, if you look at like Johnny's eighth house, like it's mm -hmm. ruled by Venus, but there's also Juno there. Her south node is there. They he probably, probably had a sex addiction with all that 12th house, too. It's, <laughs> he probably maybe. had. Yeah, no, I bet he did. Maybe. But, you know, there definitely is some past life oh. stuff there. But also mm -hmm. his Venus and being with, you know, with the vertex. Mm -hmm. Like, there's aspect there. And the north node and Chiron and all of that. And even the trine you know, from Eros over there, like her, you know, his eighth house was getting lit up by her. Mm -hmm. And then his seventh house is ruled by Mercury. So like, what's going on with his Mercury with June? And he's got Mercury at six degrees of Pisces. Hello. So, you know, there was a Jupiter square activating that Mercury. Mm -hmm. We don't know if that's her MC or not. So we're not going to pay attention to that. Right. White Moon Selena. Oh, yeah. Was actually in trying to that. And, you know, even Juno in a wide trine. Yeah. Even Black Moon Lilith mm -hmm. was in a sextile mm -hmm. there. So, seventh house was getting activated for Johnny. And the fifth house is the moon. And that's where I think, you know, maybe that was some of the biggest stuff. Is that moon in the eighth with Juno. Yeah. White Moon Selena. And it's in the eighth. Also, so, it is. It's like transformative. Right. And in the trine to the sun, which sun is fifth house energy. So, you know, the love and the passion was there to make this like relation, relationship. She really sandwich. was like holding up a mirror for him. Like you are going to respect not only me, but I want you to respect yourself. Mm. You know, like you can't keep escaping. Like, I don't want you to die. I don't want, you know, but like at the end of the day, you know. And even moon square Venus, which we didn't talk about, but. That's why no relationship's perfect. No. Oh, my gosh. But there was so much love there that was felt. Like, that's what I mean. They probably just, like, longed for each other. And, and, it, and it shows how it played out. Like, when they finally did come together, they were together. They were together for the rest of, you know. And they're still together because he, it's like he couldn't live without her. Hmm. Hmm. I know. Did you guys Beautiful. enjoy? Have you ever looked at their composite? The moon is iffy. Probably. It could be... We don't know her time of birth, so right. the moon is like somewhere in Sag, but as far as the actual degree, we really don't know. Also, the rising sign, we really don't know. So it is kind of hard to run a composite um, for accuracy. Like, this, these houses mean nothing. And the moon means nothing. But the rest of the planets have their purpose. Um, they're going to be pretty much where they're supposed to be. Sun Venus. Which some would say is combust and, mm -hmm. you know, harsh. But in a composite chart, I think it's Do they have vertex Jupiter? Good. Uh, and Pluto? What's all this? The oh, seventh. Yeah, they have Pluto in the seventh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Extreme magnetic you know, magnetism yeah. and also that Jupiter vertex. Yeah. Their relationship was a portal. Yeah. And like, and, and, and fascinating I mean, too, South Node Libra. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Moon in the 12th. Oof. So I, I would say they're like a classic case of past life lovers coming back together and, it, you know, fixing the karma. Yes. And it took a long time. Resolving the karma. Because she still let him be Johnny. Even though she would stand up for herself, she like accepted him for who he was. And she would probably do her own thing when he was busy or doing his own thing too. Otherwise it wouldn't have worked. If it was too codependent, it probably would have No, that Capricorn moon and all that Taurus kept her. Like she was a Cancer, but she didn't get lost. She was, the cancer part of her was like the nurturing part for him, like where she would always be there with him. But then that Taurus and that Capricorn moon, like really kept her like, no, 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 you're not going to disrespect me in this avatar. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, if two people are meant to be together, the universe conspires. They were almost like a universal love experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like we just lived through recently, Saturn, actually that Saturn's kind of funny because it's three, 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 but um, Saturn, square Uranus. Wow. Like We just lived through that one. We this was, did? This was, well, not you and I personally, but the collective. No, yes, yes. Um, so yes, we did, yes. but not like in our composite <laughs> or anything oh, like that. We were just talking about Saturn, square Uranus. But right, this was like an experiment gone right. So that's what I mean. It's like, you... It doesn't matter what place. This is the illusion. You know what I mean? Like all of this. And they were heavily publicly in the public eye, especially back then. You know, like June and Johnny, like fucking everybody knows them still till this day. But this is like a classic love story of like that. Yes, pain, passion. But this is true, unconditional, deep spiritual love that did come together. They didn't let their egos completely like just tear them apart, you know? And so that's what I'm saying. It's like they were meant to be together. I just cracked a code. You did? Yeah, I cracked a code just now. Their nodes are square Pluto. (gasps) Mm -hmm. And that's a skip step. And that's why it actually south node Libra. They had to do... Aries North Node first in the relationship, and that's why it probably took 12 years. But that's why it came back together was because they did their own stuff, focused on themselves for 12 years, but they knew that there was some relationship karma there. And really the seventh house, like we can't say it's in the seventh. It might have been. We don't know. But um, because the South Node, because the North Node transited over Pluto, the last node to transit Pluto, it was actually flipped for them. They had to go north node to south Libra. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, babe. <laughs> that is you why did that, crack a code. That's why that was a thing too. Yeah, no. So, yeah. That are just it's it's so it's like love like this should be inspiring. It doesn't it doesn't mean just because it's not now doesn't mean that it's not real, you know, because theirs was very karmic too. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's just, it was, it was written in the stars. It was I think their synastry the stars. shows that well. Yeah. It's, it's hard to run a composite when you don't have Thank the time you. for one of the, per, one of the people. Like it's. It is the best love story. Yeah. I lo- I mean, they're just and you know what? Also, um, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, like they're very similar too. And it again, another couple that you know, it's like because it was different back then, right? There's no fucking social media and porn and you know dating <laughs> sites and all this crazy shit that there people were brothels. Are- Yeah, I mean, all of this, yeah, it's always been going on in a different way, but, like, it's so much easier for everybody to just escape now and just, yeah, it's like you have to put in the work, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we should, oh, thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Zena. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Lauren Taylor looks killer. I used a three-barrel tonight. Dang, look at that hair Hello. girl <laughs> um we should just take like the next 10 minutes if you guys have any questions for us and then we out of here do you have any does anybody have any questions like i don't know about whatever your chart or aspects or about these couples or a couple or 
you know, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are another example in this new age 3D reality. Like those two, oh my God, their chart's insane. I don't know how they stayed away from each other. But look, they came back together because they were meant to. <laughs> two Leos. <laughs> yeah, in a seventh house transit. Yeah. Do you guys have any Thanks, questions? Cody. Thank you, Cody. There's like a 15 second delay between when we talk and they can respond. So yes, we definitely are going to do more, Emily. And um, like we said last time, if you guys have suggestions of couples or, you know, I don't know. We like to go into the dark and the light. So <laughs> like they hate each other now. <laughs> <laughs> Who us? Oh, no, 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 no. Not us. Oh. Leo's. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I know something's surfacing about that. But <laughs> it's all you know, Leo, right? Is it is it all a show or is it love? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like I can when I look at a chart, it like is my language. It speaks to me. Well, yeah, he's sober though now. He was. He was a big drinker. J Lo don't like that. He said again. He quoted that she like came in and again pretty much saved him. Even though that's not what we're here to do, but, you sometimes know. It, sometimes it's necessary. Low, yeah, Liz Taylor. Oh, I've done her and Richard Burton. Again, wow. Wow. Those two, it was too passionate that they, but they were the, each other's loves of their lives, Esperanza. They absolutely were. But, oh, my God, did they have so much spicy Scorpio. And, yeah, when he died, he wrote a letter saying that, you know. You're the love of my life. and But they, I mean, they married each other like two or three times. It's like. That is crazy. Sometimes. It lo- was just love so. Love is kind of crazy. Yeah. Love's kind of crazy. Love does. Love. Yeah. There's For, always like the fairy tale of how love's supposed to look. But I feel like the best love stories never work out that way. No. And how evolved are two people too? Like really. Um. Ari, I'm just going to call you Ari because I don't want to mess up your beautiful name. For composite charts, how much do, how much degrees and orbs should we look at or between? Well, for conjunctions and stuff, right? I mean, I don't know. You can go like it's, it's, no more than it, six. It kind of varies. Say. Like for Mercury, because Mercury is such a small planet, I usually give it like a three degree orb, maybe four, depending on what planet it's aspecting. Um, the luminaries, I'm really looking for like five degrees, maybe six for like sun, moon, Jupiter. I'll give like eight to 10, depending on the planet it's aspecting Saturn, you know, about eight to 10. Cause it's big and has rings too. Pluto depends, but you know, 10's weak, but you know, usually again, I'm about five, six with most of yeah. the outer planets. So it's like five, six. And then with the big planets, I give them a little bit bigger orb and Mercury small. And then, you know, Mars, Venus, five. Yeah. So pretty much five is like my standard for the inners. And then anything past Mars, I'm I'm going up because, I don't know, a few reasons. One, they're big ass planets. And two, um, they're just slow too. So it's like you, you feel them longer. Blue Lotus says, my husband and I have nodal flip. I have North Node Libra and he has North Node Aries with South Node with Venus, Sun, and Mars in the ninth. Do we have past life karma and do I owe him? I, you absolutely do have past life karma. I don't really like getting into this whole who owes me thing. I think we got into this on Um, accident last week. I don't like going there. I don't even feel comfortable going there with that because I feel like there's a lot of, um, Because I've read things where it says the planet person is the one that owes the south node or north node person. So I don't really know what... And then you said that it's the node person. So I don't like to go into that. Obviously, there's karma that both people have to come together to work on. So I, I don't... Really, it doesn't matter who yeah, owes Yeah, the, there's just anything. karma. You're, you're both going to experience it. There's there's karma. It's Yes, it's a definitely a... Pat, yeah, a nodal flip. Yes. I would say we that... Have that. Um, you know, I guess you could say the planetary person would feel it more. Yes. Yes. In a like karmic sort of spiritual way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I like, do believe that because I've read things too, like who feels it more. And it's kind of like, I think when you start going down those rabbit holes, because then it's like our egos wanting to be like that 
person owes us. And I don't like to get into that. You know what I mean? It's like, I think that because we can, that's the only reason I don't, I'm sure that there is, you know, an individual who really does owe the person. But if we're not in a like exalted way, then we're going to be like, yeah, I knew that person did. And like, you know, it just gets negative. But I think that if you're in an exalted state about it, yes. I mean, regardless, you guys, yes, have past life karma. And, you know, karma is just cause and effect. You know, it doesn't have to be negative. It can be very positive. It just um, is all about how evolved Mm -hmm. two people are and how, you know, do you want to keep working on whatever needs to be worked on? You're not doomed if you have Neptune in the second when it comes to money, but you do have to like pay attention to these things. Like you, you want to like pay attention to how much money you're spending. Do you have enough? Are you overcharging on a credit card? This will be fine. Like, (laughs) you know, I, I would say that's an interesting aspect. Like it's not terrible. And depending on how that Neptune's aspected and, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you probably have Neptune in Sag, so you're probably a Scorpio rising. I could be wrong. I don't know how old you are. Um, so Sag rising, Scorpio rising, one of the two. It's like, well, what house does that Neptune rule? Um, it's probably going to be your fifth house, you know. So if you're creative and using that Neptune to like channel some really creative things, you actually could attract a lot of abundance, but you're also going to have to be paying attention to the fine detail and like making sure that you're not overspending. Yeah, of course with Neptune there, you know, just being discerning about it. Um, Cody, that's so funny. You say Bonnie and Clyde, cause I was just Googling a sinistry aspect last night that, um, I've only had with one person, but actually you and I kind of have it. It's just that it's not close. It's like 10 degrees apart. And I think when it's Lilith, you know, it needs to be close. But um, when I Googled Lilith conjunct Pluto sinistry, Bonnie and Clyde is the picture that came up. That's hilarious. And I was like, oh my God. And it's like... Partner in crime. They said it has to be like within a zero to three degree orb, but that it's like, you know. So Bonnie and Clyde would be a very good one to do. They must have had Lilith Pluto because they had the picture of it. Mm -hmm. Your Pluto's at 17 and my Lilith's at seven. So I'm glad that... I mean, it's there. We just don't feel (laughs) it in that crazy way. We do offer readings, Paige. I offer readings from my website. Um... I offer a few different ones, yes. mainly like an evolutionary astrology reading and, you know, then transits, progressions, solar arcs, that kind of thing. Lauren does offer readings too. And again, like when it comes to like asteroids and those or relationship well, I mean, I stuff. I love all of it, but I love relationships. Like I, I'd say go for sure with Lauren. Like I'm more like. He likes to do the whole overall. It's more of a deep, like I'm Pluto in the eighth. Like it's, yeah. it's more of like a deep, like I want I want to like help you see like a deeper layer of your soul, I guess, when I'm doing a reading that maybe you're not aware of. Um, and not that like Lauren's not doing that, but I'm definitely not looking at like the these other aspects. And I just got a reading from someone who uses a ton of asteroids, and oh, it was a she's great amazing. reading. Oh, she's amazing, Cosmic Space yeah, Witch. Yeah, the Cosmic Space Witch. She does Space Star Witch is Seed. She does Star so, Seed Astrology. You know, shout out to you know Allie. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. She's awesome. So um, again, it's just like what you resonate with. But yeah, we both do. And I do have a link for Lauren in the description below Mm -hmm. to get in contact with her if you'd like a reading. So I recommend that as well. Um, I love that Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Yep. I would absolutely love to look at them. Love them. Sunny and Cher. Absolutely. Um, I think there was another one. Yeah. Okay. These are really good suggestions. So yeah. Um, I'm to, oh, Brian can help you with that in his class. Do you show people how to read their natal chart in your class or is that not part of no, your I, I, No, I, yeah, I tell. And it's on gosh, sale right now. It's, yeah, for $55, $55 and 55, and 55 cents. cents. Five, that five, class five, five, five. is like t- 23 hours of the very basics and then building up to how to read it, use it, go into more layers. Like that class covers a lot of material for the price. It's great. So um, I recommend it if you need it. 
It says your welcome page. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, absolutely. Don't we all? For sure. Yeah, no doubt. Um, find somebody with Lilith conjunct your Pluto. Um, what do you think about Venus squaring the nodes and nodes are opposite one and seven? Okay, wait. What do you think about Venus squaring the nodes in your chart? Just to be clear. And then, and nodes are opposite one and seven. Like first house, seventh house? I think that's what I think that's what they're asking. Will you please just but clarify? I will say that Green um, Knight? Venus squaring the nodes, if you're talking about natally, that Venus is a very important point in your chart. The house it's in, the sign it's in, what's going on with that, like that's a crucial development point to not only using your south node properly, but using and moving towards and learning your north node. It really channels through the Venus, so it's very important, and it's almost like a. It really is like a skip step, also, mm -hmm. where there's just been some relationship or self worth stuff that didn't get resolved properly um, in a past life or two or whatever it ended up being, and um, it's an emphasis of focus that you know when you designed your life to come into this one, you're like, this is important. Mm -hmm. So. Um... I would definitely like to take your class. When does it start? Well, the one that's on sale, he oh, already yeah. did. It, you can just buy it. There's and it's a link up there. below. A link below. Like. That that one's inexpensive. And then I I'm gonna do a more advanced class. I'm thinking the you know in March. Soon. Beginning of March. It's just you know you gotta do like. But there's been so much going on and... lately that I haven't had a chance to like really figure out how I want to teach it. But I have what I want to teach dialed up. Um, and then my family's coming here tomorrow. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm close. <laughs> I'm going to let you answer this one. Um, are there any major standout indicators in synastry that mean don't go in this relationship? I know it's complex, but any that come to mind? Yeah. Take it away. I mean, I don't really like dating somebody that has Saturn in the same sign as my son. Like, that's kind of like a that person who has Saturn with the other person's son. Like, they're going to teach you some lessons you probably like that's like signing up for an elective class in high school that you really didn't want to take you know you might learn something Saturn <laughs> you'll anywhere. probably learn something important at the end that like you'll use in the world but you're yeah. not going to enjoy that semester <laughs> if you will yeah saturn and hard um, aspects chiron saturn square moon you know the, oh, the, yeah. the moon person's gonna or even opposite. It's not going to be super comfortable. I mean, it can. Like, there are mature ways that people can act these out. But, um... Sorry to interrupt, but Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love, Pisces Cancer, just like June and Johnny. Oh, man, Pisces that was, Cancer. Um, no, they, I've looked at their chart. It's, um, you know, it was love, too. But, again, Kurt Cobain. Um, and her. I mean, they, they, yeah. Um, I mean, we obviously know that that, and I think that he was obviously like very much, they were both very much in love, you know, but I mean, again, it, it was, that was a very 12th house relationship that didn't exalt like June and Johnny. It was like very much <laughs> in the underworld and clearly we know how that played out, but they would be a good one to to pull up, you know. Um, but yeah, Pisces Cancer. I do want to say to that don't yes. go into relationships question that personally, I don't put a lot of, like for myself, if I'm going to go into a relationship, I really want to get to know the human. Mm -hmm. Like the astrology is one thing and I will look at it, but I'm not going to write off yeah, a was, connection mm -hmm. because yeah. of any aspect in the chart. Right. I would rather see how that person actually presents themselves, acts, mm -hmm. make my own decision on their human, um, because they could act out a chart at a very high level, even though they have a you know a hard aspect to yours. There's potential that depending on the person, you know, it could play out in a positive way with the same energy, but the more exalted you know formula um, outcome. So that's kind of my own opinion. 
I don't like to write anything off because yeah, of no, I was gonna an say that. Chart. And she and she did say like she knows that it's complex and everything. But yeah, yeah, we don't want you looking at charts and being like, oh, okay, like I've got to stay away from that because yeah, I mean that, that could be silly. Like, if you're meeting somebody and they're activating you, it's really like for your. And you never know. Maybe you, yeah. maybe you don't end up dating, but maybe you become like really good friends, yeah. or you you know something you know can really manifest positive from the connection. Sometimes it'd be a shame to just write off anybody. Right. You know, that's really like judging a book by its cover I in a agree. lot of ways. And, you know, it's almost judging a soul by its cover yeah. with astrology. And I don't think we want to do that either. All right. Our last question. Our last question is um, Jan says, and I'm going to have Brian explain this. Can you explain what a natal Chiron retrograde means? I have this in my second house Aquarius. And it says I am... It's like, it looks Leo, Leo, Sag. Um, mm -hmm. So any, um, any retrograde planet is a major evolutionary path to really go inward. Like your healing is really directed on your inner healing. Any kind of focus on external healing or, you know, especially in the second house, like some kind of external thing for worth or value is not going to do it. Like you really had to be put into m moments or situations throughout your life where you had to, you know, sit with yourself and come to terms with your value, come to terms with your uniqueness. And, um, you know, to not look at yourself as a weirdo, but to look at yourself as, Unique. you know, a very powerful, creative mm -hmm. being that's doing things differently. But it's something, you know, I think Chiron in Aquarius might be the best place yeah. for it. Yeah. Because yeah. Chiron is this like weirdo in its own right, and so is Aquarius. But there's something about the Aquarian weird that yeah. everybody wants. Mm -hmm. It's very attractive. Like it's a very attractive to weird. Because it. so, it's unique. Yeah, it's it's retrogrades mean you know especially the more plants retrograde you have, the more inner work you had to do or you're meant to do. Um, yeah. To get the exterior in alignment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we love you guys, and we hope that we are. We're going to keep doing them. I, we had a whole thing this morning that I was like, we cannot promise <laughs> that we're going to do these, and I don't want to be like, like, I am very like, I don't know, that maybe that's my moon in Taurus. Like, I'm like, no, we said we're going to do something. I want to do it, and yes, things come up. And so I didn't even think we were going to do this, and then he was like, oh, I don't have to do deep astrology tonight we're gonna do it and i was like okay we were gonna do it at like probably 12 30 yeah for like a quick but he had hour. a lot of readings today and um so yes no we plan on yeah doing these you know every wednesday i mean i it's like wednesday is when we want to do that you mm -hmm. know ideally However it manifests, um, we'll always let you guys know if we, you know, can in advance. Um, but yes, I, I want to hold us, um, accountable, accountable to show up because I mean, I, we love doing this and we love, you know, connecting with all of you and soul tribe and just like yeah just seeing that you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. any connection that you've been in it doesn't it's it's all for our soul growth it doesn't you know even if you are longing for someone it's like we still have to keep moving in this reality and we still have to be working on ourselves and doing everything that we can you're very welcome jan um and it's all for our soul's growth and soul's evolution. And we're really just learning the scorpionic way of not being attached and letting go. And like Pluto is breaking down all of these God programs in our mind and how relationships need to be. And you know what I mean? It's just like, we need to be liberating ourselves. And if somebody, if this doesn't give you like so much proof, these two, that if you are meant to be with another soul, the divine conspires. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we're all just really remembering who we are from past timelines. Like, um, so yeah, we love you guys. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all showing yes, up. Here. If you and, enjoyed, um, please hit the like button. It helps oh, the thank algorithm, you. and we appreciate that very much. <laughs> um, yes.
We do appreciate that. We appreciate all you guys. And yeah, we will see you next week. Happy Valentine's. Happy and I Valentine's hope you Day. all have such a beautiful week. Yes. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Love, love, love. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.